What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Legacy TV Podcast. And today I got my second episode. I'm very, very excited today. I got a good friend of mine, six degree Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt, MMA pioneer, good friend of my coaches, father, coach still, just an all around legend. And I had to have you on here, brother, just because I've known you for many years and I know what you represent and what you bring to the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu community and the voice that you are. And Jiu Jitsu saved my life. So for me to be able to bring somebody like you on my podcast in the beginning for me is is, is major. And I and I want to tell you, thank you for being here today, brother. No, Respect. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure Respect. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for having me over here. You're like, fine. I'm yeah. very, I'm very glad to be here today. No. Uh, you know, we have a lot of stories in Jiu Jitsu. We grew up doing this. And it's a pleasure to be here with you, man. Second one. Yeah, this is my second one. I'm, uh, I did my first podcast, which is about me, which is, you know, I just want to let everybody know kind of, you know, what I've been through from, from the streets, from, from, from selling CDs in the streets, from getting in trouble, to what led me into uh, the martial arts and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and, and, and changed my life and, and made me a better person. And I, I, my goal is, Alan, these days, as I get older, my goal is to be a voice, to, uh, to be like you guys, because I know being a coach now is much more than just being a coach. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if I, I tell you, everybody, man, uh, be a coach is not, first of all, we're not coaches. We are professors and ambassadors, you know, because every day you got to relearn and re-educate yourself so you can teach others. Yeah. You know, because be, be a teacher is a, is a tough job, man. Yeah. You know, I left, uh, I used to fight. I used to fight. Then when I translate myself to become a teacher, I become a different person. Yes. I become more, I, I, honestly, I become softer. Yes. Yes, you, you know? have to. You have to. I become soft because in terms of teaching, because the, if I teach jiu-jitsu to the people the way I learn jiu-jitsu, <laughs> I have no one, not even one student. Let's yeah. be honest. If I, if I teach jiu-jitsu the way I learn, yeah. you know what I mean? The way I learn jiu-jitsu, man, I have not even one student today. I know, I know exactly what you you're know, talking about. And, exactly and I can only thing. imagine because like at the stage when I got Joe, he was still a killer. And there was still a lot of killers in the room, but the times that you guys can't come up and the, the way you guys would train, it's fucking crazy, right? And I, that's what I wanted to talk about today with you, Alan, is, is uh, like the history of, of you and the history of your jujitsu. Please, Alan, just make sure that like you, the microphone, you can hear yourself. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, I'm, I can't hear myself. Because, uh, you got, yeah. you got I'm just so trying many to adjust. Cool... I don't want to stay kind of sideways to the camera like this. The yeah, no, like no. You got so many yeah. fucking cool stories to tell, and I just being around you growing up in in, in the jiu-jitsu community. Every time I talk to you, I was laughing. And I'm like, I, this guy's energy is so. There's so much to, we got to get to today, bro. So the the first thing I want to ask you, like, okay, tell me what city you grew up in in Brazil. I grew up in Rio de Janeiro, man, Copacabana, <laughs> beach. You know what I mean? I grew up right on on the uh, on the uh, on the mecca of jiu-jitsu. You know, beautiful beaches, beautiful women, be like everything, uh, man, everything. I've been, know. I want to go so bad, bro. I've been telling you, yeah. I have to go. Yeah, you so sure. you grew up in paradise in Brazil. Was there, was, was, or was it? I would not say paradise. <laughs> Uh, the, the way you describe I, it, the way it looks. Uh, is, I've heard different stories. That's what I'm going to say. It was in paradise. No, you know what it is? The paradise is the feeling because when I remember my childhood, for me, it was such a cool thing, you know what I mean? The whole experience for me was such everything very amazing, you know? Uh, I, I, I really love grew up in Rio de Janeiro, you know? Rio de Janeiro is that town, Rio de Janeiro, that's where I learned Jiu Jitsu, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I cannot say a paradise because for me, 
I, I grew I grew up I grew up in the slums of Rio de Janeiro. Okay, right? I know. I can relate because I, I was gonna I say I I, this is from there. Santa Ana right here is yeah. fucking paradise for me, bro. So yeah. I like if people look yeah. like yeah. Santa Ana of Rio the slums of Rio de Janeiro yeah. is a uh, yeah. I'm if I'm from the Santa and the slum of Rio de Janeiro, Santa Ana would be a a rich guy in Rio de Janeiro, man. <laughs> you know, back in the days, back in the days when I was growing up, the Santa Ana was a lot different. It's gotten a lot better, and I'm so happy yeah. that it's changed. And it's like money's coming into the city, and it, it, it's changed. But I can only imagine what it was yeah. like out there where you were growing. Yeah, up. yeah, yeah. No, man, there was a, it's a rough ground, you know. So did you have a crew that you rolled with, like as a bunch of kids that you grew up in the of area? Course, with? Of course, yeah. Show me about the crew. Everybody's got a crew. No, no. But the thing is, I, I was uh, because my my family was like this. My family I come from a, a family of musician, right? Okay. All poet, musician, right? Then my my grandfather was a guy that uh, used uh, used to have a restaurant at the restaurant. Uh, they used to have was open for all the musicians, but back in the day, back in the sixties and the fifties, we were under a dictatorship, right? There was not uh, 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 the, the, the things my grandpa was doing, receiving poet and musician yeah. and people to express themselves and talk about themselves, right? That was not illegal at the time. Then my grandpa was one of the only places in Rio de Janeiro, Botafogo, that have this place that embraces everybody and kind of protect everybody. In Basically, the, for like independent artists of independent the, artists, that's right at the beginning. Cool. Yeah, let's that's go. right at the beginning when all, uh, the, the way to uh, you express yourself in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil at the time, you could cost your head, you know. Yeah. Then that was the place my grandpa had. Have at the time, you know, at the restaurant. Then they grew up. Uh, it's a many, many great musicians that come from Brazil that used to to be my grandpa's buddy. You know what I mean? Like Nelson Gonçalves, Pet Carvalho, uh, 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 Paulinho da Viola. Then various. If many Brazilians hear this, they know who I'm talking about. You know? <laughs> then, then, then I grew up in this atmosphere of music, musical family. Uh, poetry and yeah. I grew up like this, you know what I mean? But when my grandpa passed away, because my father used to have their band, they used to have the, the band group, you know what I mean? It used to be really cool, you know. But at the same time, you're the way your father was also saying, Yeah, my, my father, father, my father played all the instrument, oh, every I, single I one. Says it. My father stayed playing, my father and my and my uncle have a have a group together. <laughs> That's and, cool. and, and, and they my father played every single instrument, says violin to piano wow. to cordial, anything, you name it. And, and he, he and he's he was a singer as well. They used to have a group back to the to the end of the, 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 the 70s. Then on the on the middle of the to the end of the to the beginning of the 80s. Then on the end of this the big Right in the middle of the eighties, my my grandpa passed away. When my grandpa passed away, things didn't run well. We still we still under a dictatorship system, you know. Then when my grandpa passed away, I was around my ten years old. That's when we moved to this slum. All the good times, who got the most was my brother and my sister. You know what I mean? I got turned to the end of the good times to to realize later who I was rubbing shoulder with. I go, wow. I was a little kid sitting in the, in the middle of my grandpa's lap, in the middle of all the artists, musicians, and poets of this country. You know what I mean? And, I, and today I realized that. And then all, all of a sudden, you guys are in the slums after. All of a sudden, one of my. So you went from this this beautiful like musical life. Everything's this is the memories that you have, and then all of a sudden you're in the fucking ghetto. Boom! On the heartbeat. <sighs> Man, that's, that can that can be rough. And then you're the new kid on the block. The new kid on the block. That's what happened. You know? Then we start. And, and when my my father, I see the families where we used to live with my grandpa was things deteriorating because my father was not a businessman. He could not keep the business together because my grandpa was the guy that manages his career yeah. and, and, and control the business. That the inside uh, in, inside of the restaurant w w was a group of musicians always playing. Yeah. It was a very artistic movement. One of the one of the first art uh, artistic movement in Rio de Janeiro. Yeah, it was based in Botafogo. 
you know, in the city called Botafogo. And then uh, on all this movement over there, then I find myself when my grandpa passed away, right on the slum. Did you? So when you get out here now, now did you have friends right away? Or what was Man, like, your memory? No, right away. Right was right the away. kids picking on you? Yeah, no, no, really. You because, get bullied. Yeah, no, no, really. Because you, you check because, it. Because I know well, from where the story is like, kind of heading, I know like being a new kid on the block, because I've kind of <clears> been there. And then all of a sudden, when you're there, these kids want to pick on you. They want to beat you up. They want to fight. You got to prove yourself. I don't know necessarily how it was for, for, for you, but I know I've been in those situations. So I'm wondering when you get out there, because I, I know this is going to transition into... Okay, okay. No, because uh, what happened is a lot of these people, a lot of those poets yeah. of Brazil was... These people that was living the slum over there that was going to my grandpa's oh, okay. restaurant over okay. there because was going people of, of all levels. But the greatest poet of Brazil, they, most of them, they were not wealthy. Right. You know, and a lot of them used to live in the slums over there. And we have in, in common friends, you know. Okay. Then it was not something that shocks me. Was kind of, what shocks me was the way I began to live. Not because of the people there, oh, they're going to pull me. No, what, do you, what do you think were the changes like? The change that was drastically because I went to a house to, to live in the 20 by 20, man. Me, my brother, my sister, and my dad. Yeah. That was you cool. know, 20 by 20, now we have to go to the bathrooms outside. You know what I mean? The bathrooms outside is a... It, 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 it is a flood of uh, is a sewer running through everybody's house right in front of everybody's house, literally. You know, rat was like fucking. So, so at, at those ages, what memories do you have of, of what, what? What did you think? Like, what, what did you did you think this was gonna be normal for you? Or did no, you... no, I never thought oh this is gonna be normal. I just thought I knew we're gonna overcome the situation. And, I, you knew. And, and, and my father is going to overcome the situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was relying more on my father because I was a kid, but I knew we were going to come after the situation because I believe in my father. My father's a man of a lot of integrity, honor, you know? And, 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 but he was this, this poet, you know, you know? He, he was this poet, this musician that all of a sudden he had to become a businessman. How the hell? Yeah. You know, it's like me. I left the cage when they left the cage. And I go, oh man, what do I do now? Oh, I retire. Oh fuck. So that's what, what I, I that's a, okay. What you, I do? Yeah, when you get in the cage, that's what, what I do. <laughs> what I do? Oh, you retire. What do you do? Oh fuck, I hear up for what? What okay, so what do I do with my life? Tell you me. Know? Take me back. What was the reason? It's different world for jujitsu. Like, did you know about jujitsu the whole time you were growing up from when you were born? Like, was it popular at that time? No, no, jujitsu was not popular. Jujitsu. Jiu-Jitsu in Brazil, it, 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 it even was was very uh, 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 was very negative. Sometimes have a very negative message in the media, right? Because because uh, let's put it like this: Jiu-Jitsu was doesn't have this glamour that today we have. Yeah. In Brazil, sometimes if if somebody fights in the on the street and hurts somebody. The media to promote because Jiu Jitsu was the the martial arts that was growing in Brazil, and, and, and sometimes the people of Brazil doesn't even appreciate and have the appreciation of the, the things they have on their own culture. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Then they begin to come. Oh, they went to the United States. Now we love all oh, because we went to America. Yeah. You know, have to have everything gotta leave Brazil, go to America, then to become popular again in Brazil. Right, Brazil have this tendency to let this repeat all the time. You know, not value so much of the culture they had. Yeah. First, when the culture leave, like Jiu Jitsu, the Jiu Jitsu didn't have the value that yeah, that, that have like we have today, yeah. the prestige. Because Jiu Jitsu, for the first time when they show, one of the first times they show the Vale Tudo in 1991, when it was the beginning of everything, the first two Brazilian UFC, I would call, because that that was the challenge between uh, Jiu Jitsu and Luta Livre. That's it. We did this was a national TV, and the next day, 
onde fala o Murilo versus Murilo versus Valid uh, uh, versus Eugênio Tateu, Murilo versus Mendes e, 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 e Fábio Gurgel versus Denício. Was a challenge that those guys from Luta Livre challenge the, the Jiu-Jitsu guys and we end up and the Jiu-Jitsu guys end up defeating them. That's when that's when it was a big the big impact of Jiu-Jitsu in Brazil that had not hit America yet. At all, yeah. yeah at all. And, and that's when all the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gyms flooded with people, the tons of people. In Brazil. Yeah, yeah wow, in Brazil. When, when everything begins, that, that's why the kind of the first we've seen was the challenge between Jiu-Jitsu and Luta Livre and Castle. And Castle invited all the black belts to defend Jiu-Jitsu because the fight back then was about the honor was not about, oh, I want money, I want this. No, it was about to defend Jiu-Jitsu because we were defending the, the, not uh, uh, Carson Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. We, Carson Gracie was defending the Jiu-Jitsu legacy yes. itself yes. over there. It was the moment, that's right. the same moment that when Carson, when Carson Gracie fought about Valdemar Santana back on the day, to, to, it, 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 even I don't think it as bad because Valdemar Santana is still, still, He, he still was a jiu-jitsu black belt. He was a yeah. jiu-jitsu. I don't see as that much threat, you know, but, but the Luta Livre, those guys was not considering themselves a jiu-jitsu black belt. They consider, then, then, then they have this challenge. My point is, even on this challenge, when this is, was over, a bunch of people, that's like a bunch of people that work for this company in Brazil, it's called Global, was fired. Yeah. Everybody was fired. Uh, a bunch of people was fired in, the, the, in this company, right? Why? It's like you, you fire everybody in pay-per-view over there. That, or, or, or you fire everybody on... Um... Bellator or UFC. The no, 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 no. Not the promotion, the channel. Oh, that, shit. The channel. The whole channel. That... Fire everybody. Yeah. No, let's... Uh, well, well, tell me what channel. Channel 11 Fox News. Channel 11 Fox News. After Channel 11 Fox News showed the MMA to whole United States, everybody watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the next day, everybody in the Fox News on fire. Damn. That's like this. That's how bad it was. That's, That's how, how bad, bad it was. I wonder they, why. They, no, no, no. Then imagine it. 20 years later, Fox News now buying <laughs> the same thing to watch it. Go, oh, hey, hold on. This is not so bad. This it's, is so crazy. it's so crazy that over there they, they didn't they didn't understand how big it was until it no, 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 they, no, no, that people people that was around Jiu Jitsu that tribe, we all understand what it was. We yeah. all understand we were uh, totally conscious of the science and the and the knowledge that our master Carlos Castle and And had to translate to everybody. We were so. You guys knew you could beat uh, everybody. But, yeah, but the thing is, it was the message, the way you have to be delivered to show Jiu Jitsu power. Yeah, right. What was the message to show the Jiu Jitsu power? It have to be delivered. We kick everybody's ass. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Then this is bother people because go we are martial waters. Yeah. We are, oh we don't they try to 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 to, to they, they create something so they can escape. They, and they try to go, oh, those guys are savage, they know how to fight. We are artists. But we were artists as yeah. well, man. Yeah, we just want we should just we, better artists. Yeah, no, it's not because being uh, the, the, you, uh, you were proving the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just want to say, hey dude, listen. Check it out. Let's yeah. let, let's put a challenge over yeah. here to see because Carlos Gacy did this back in the 50s. Yeah. Uh, 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 everything started with Master Carlos, Master Andrew. Mm -hmm. Then then Walid Ismail went to the near to the TV and did the same thing. Hey, Jiu Jitsu, we challenge everybody, we are the best, and that's it. That's it. And that was the point. And those guys from Luta Livre didn't take this well and they accepted the challenge and that's how everything starts. That's crazy. You know, that's the, and that's when that's we came crazy. everybody to the United States. So let me ask you this, right? What was your first memories of like your training? Like when did you start Jiu Jitsu? I started Jiu Jitsu in Copacabana in the Castle Grace Gym. I was a kid. I was 12 years old. 12 years old. Okay, I've trained 12 year old kids. So you walk in the gym, 12 years old, like, and you had known about jiu jitsu already. You you'd heard about it. What what was that like? What was what Carlson was there teaching himself? No, no, no. no. It was one of when, his... when, when I was there, uh, uh, 
my, my thing was Casano. I, I, my, my sister was going out, was uh, hanging out with one of my friends that become one of the guys that guide me into Jiu Jitsu. His name is Luis Carlos Mateus, Menimo. My sister used to hang out with him, we go out with him, he used to be his girlfriend. Then, then I, then I was a kid and he used to tell me, I used to train in Judo with my grandpa. Right? Then, then I was a kid and he used to hang out. Then we used to do techniques together on the street. Then one day he told me, oh, and you're really good on this. You know, I go, yeah, I play, I train judo. I used to train judo at the Colonia de Férez, the vacation colony that's inside of the military base. I used to train inside of the military oh, base in Brazil when I was a kid. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, then, yeah. then, 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 uh, then many more used to play with me in Botafogo Street, you know what I mean? Uh, he used to hang out and uh, he just played with just me. And he used to kick me my ass too, he used to bully me around too, you know what I mean? <laughs> he, re he was like, I was about 12, he was about 18. Yeah, he's a big brother. You know what I mean? Big, big brother. brother. He yeah. just smacked yeah, me around. I don't know exactly yeah, what yeah, said, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> then he smacked me around, then one day he told me, hey, hey, I learned. Why don't you go to Custom Grace? Come to train with me five in the morning. I said he was a Custom Grace purple belt. They go, oh, yeah, yeah, I go. He used to try to teach you Copacabana. Five in the morning, I'd be there. I begin to train with him five in the morning. And about two months, he told me, hey, go to Custom Grace gym. After two months of training? Yeah, after two months Wait, of training. Well, did you, like, right away, you loved it, right? Did yeah, right it? away, yeah. Because I was training judo was something very similar. Than it. And judo, one thing that used to bother me that I, that I have to stop afterwards. After you get them on the ground. Yeah, after yeah, get them on the ground. Well, I want to well, continue, well, I want to do something, you know. Yeah. The, then jiu-jitsu was very appealing to me. I, I, I felt so good. So he said, he said they tell you to go to Carlson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Carlson, how far is Carlson at the time from you? At, at the time I used to live in Botafogo, about 10 miles, 12 10 miles. miles. 10 miles, that's not far at all. Yeah. That's not really not far at all. Rio is very, everything is very small. Everything is very small. imagine close. what the mats were like. And, yeah. Okay, so tell me. Yeah, so the mats as big as this garage over here. So you go, yeah. so you go meet Carlson himself. Then I go meet Carlson. No, no, no. I go to, after he trained me for two months, he told me, is I gonna have a competition? A Jiu Jitsu competition. You know, is he on the yellow belt of division. You know what I mean, it's a kid's competition. And Castle set up elimination over there to the kids that wants to compete. And you have opportunity to do it. You wanna go there? I said, yes. But when, then I show up there to train one day. But when I show up over there, was most of the rich kids over there, you know what I mean? Oh, kind of the little protection, really? the, the kids that being protected up because they pay the gym, you know what I mean? And I'm this foreigner just trying to get in the competition. The castle said, no, 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 all the categories full, not castle. I went over there I, so, to train. Someone said, no, the, all the categories full, but if you want to try, let him try, let him roll around. Then when they roll around, I did pretty good training with the kids, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh... And you were 12 at the time. Yeah, 12 yeah. at the time. It was yeah, one belt. One did, belt. There's a lot of kids there? Yeah, tons of it. Full of kids. That's crazy. The gym was packed. Then they go, okay, bye. I go, okay, when they come back, they go, don't come back. We do. They didn't like you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. That's all right. Hey, it's okay. So, so you like, and you notice that okay, these guys don't like me. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. I like continue. Go back five in the morning with Manor Boy again. <laughs> okay, so you go back and you start training with, with the guy again. What's yeah. Manor Boy? Do do do. Keep training. Then he goes. I go there again, boys. I go. Okay, let's go there again. A couple weeks pass. He's getting close to the tournament. Then I went back there again. And he goes, he goes, okay, awesome. Carl Carlson, Carlson. Oh, so yeah, it's time to train. Put everybody to train. Then I'm training again. I'm trying to impress. Oh, you try to impress Carlson Grace. Yeah, right now Carlson's going <laughs> to the of kids over there. Yeah. And he just had a few seconds to capture his eyes, you know. And I tried to roll again. Ah, I tried to capture his eyes. Nothing. Oh, man. No I know how that is. I know like how no delivery. when you really want, you know, you, you want to do well, you want the person that you 
want to do well in front of to see and then and then they just and they don't see it. I, I yeah, guess. they so, don't see it. So you were kind of let down a little bit at the yeah, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the second I'm time, you go, okay, okay, do come back and come back and few more. Because I didn't have money to pay the gym. Yeah, so you. you know what I mean? Yeah. Then they come back because most of the a lot of kids that was there were Spaniards. Yeah. yeah. Pay member. They, then the competition came. The competition arrived. I passed by the competition, came, then many more told me, hey, Alan, about two weeks before the competition, he said, uh, if they need one kid and they, and they have heavyweight division and the yellow belt. I said, I'm the guy, man. And you were heavyweight at the time? No. But you didn't give a fuck oh, the way you know, was. <laughs> I mean, okay. Jay, I just yeah. didn't need an opportunity. Yeah, I just wanted to compete. Okay. Yeah, yellow belt. Go, hey, I'm in. Okay. He goes, you sure it's a halfway yellow belt? Then we go, minimal. Teach me the point score over there. And that's it. Yeah. It's a submission point score, right? Yeah. He goes, yeah. So we, okay, let me teach you the point score first. Okay. Yeah. I run with him over the point score. Okay. What about, let's run over the submission. Boom, boom. Okay. And the day the competition came, and, and, and no, 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 the day the competition came, fuck no. The day the competition came, no, I have to sneak more because, Castle, hey, Castle, you don't have to pay pay for the competition, your name over there, but you have to go to this mountain over there called Teresopolis, far as fuck. It's like, I have to leave here, go all the way to Big Bear. I go, where? Well, but you're a big bear, I'm fucking going there, too far, motherfucker. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> you want to say, go over there for what? Yeah, to compete. That's for You're like, man, I for, can't even. I, I, I can't even afford, man. I'm nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get in the bar. I got to get in the bus. Yeah. I got to pay bus. I got to. No, I got to pay food. No, it's not going to happen. He goes, man, it's your chance. Yeah. I go, okay, how much money do I need? He goes, you need money for you to during the day to eat yeah. and you pay money for your transportation back and forth on the okay okay i can get that went to the i went to the cemetery right next uh, i was right close i remember that because do, do you know the the, the the day of the the dead the dead the, the day, day of, of the, the dead. dead yeah yeah right the day of the dead yeah. in brazil people go to the cemetery over yeah. there to respect the they respect and, and it was right and close to that you know and a lot of my friends used to make money going to the cemetery selling sell water and clean the tombs okay you know and i said okay man i need some money fuck what are i gonna do fuck i went to the cemetery called san juan batista i went to the cemetery got a buck of water Start cleaning sponge them. You know, then I begin to sell, clean the tombs. Hey, I approach him and how you doing? You want some water, a few flowers? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm gonna okay, clean the tomb. They go, oh yeah. Then I begin to buy flowers. I go, okay, I need more money. I begin to buy flowers to sell. Doing whatever you could buy to make everything. Money. Yeah, yeah, everything. I begin to buy flowers to sell. And turned it to the end. I was grabbed, not even buying flowers anymore. I was, uh, I was two days. I was working there for two days. The next day, I go dead. Man, sometimes I go buy flour, I make a small money, you know, uh, and the transition, I have to go outside the cemetery and grab the flour and come back. What I do that to make more money? He goes, man, I don't know what that goes. And he save a prayer for the guy over there, grab his flour and go sell somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's not going to be bothered. Leave one for him over there and you're good to go. <laughs> 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 then, then I used to go there. I was like, oh, grab the flower, leave one that's over there. Yeah. You start selling. I used to go to the tombs. Oh, if somebody needs flowers in the front, Paul, go to the front. That's how I hustle, you know. And what to the I have to clean it up. You were you yeah. were hustling. You did whatever. Yeah. Took, do, I, well, you didn't do anything wrong. You did something that that was actually like very noble of you and and respectful. And you you kind of like it meant something to you to want to compete. To impress Carlson, to where you went and you hustled and did whatever you could to make the money. To, I, like these days, a lot of kids they, they get sponsored. They get a, like you went. It's kind of cool to hear that you went and did that. You know, because just just to compete, and then you were also that young. So then you get the money, and then yeah, yeah, no, because I, I need the money. I go, man, that's my only opportunity. I need, I need to compete. I love. It's because I don't think I don't even think my only opportunity. I always think, well, man, I need to compete so bad. <laughs> I love this. 
You know what I mean? Because I was competing inside of the colonial defense, like I told you, in the, inside the military base. Yeah. I used to have competition all the time, and I love it. I, I love the, 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 the feeling of having a medal on my chest. I yeah. like the feeling. You, you know? Feel, then, so proud. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's gratifying. Yeah, gratifying. Then, then I go, oh, man, I got this opportunity as well to, to be part of Kassam's team. Then, then I got my money, saved the money, then I, I traveled to Teddy's operation. When I got a tennis up, it was right on the mouth, cold as fuck, cold as a mother. <laughs> then I got over there, I see the whole team of Castle right in the corner of the competitions, the group, but the competitions pack. Oh, and I see a group right in the corner, and I walk through to them. And who were you with? You were just... I was me and Manimo. That's me it. and Manimo, that's it. Okay. He show up, he goes, hey, let me guide you, where are you going? Because my, he, he asked to my dad, hey, I'm going to take Alan to the Teresopolis. I lost safe money because he asked my dad permission to take me to Teresopolis. Mm. Go, hey, 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 dad, I made the money, I'm going to go to Teresopolis with Manimo because I'm going to compete. My dad said, go ahead. With Manimo because my, my family knew Manimo. My family, we, our family, like I said, his family as well, we used to go to my grandpa. Uh, his father used to be one of the, my grandpa's clients and the, over there as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and we have a common friend. Then, then my dad said, oh, go ahead, go with Menimo, go. Cool. Then I, 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 I left with Menimo, went to the Zonto school, he introduced me everybody. And I see, I, I felt, uh, 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 that's why I felt the energy for the first time in my life to belong to something. So so this whole team, the, so Carlson's Gracie's whole team was there. On the corner, right on the corner and like they, this. They kind of accepted you no, in. No, 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 I was walking like this and Menimo was just guiding me where to go. I've seen this huge crowd, a bunch of teams spread. So Carlson Gracie's like got a lot of people with them? A group of kids, tons of kids. And then there's other fucker. teams there, just like there We're is We're talking now. about 50 kids, How many 60, Like lots 80. of teams, like two? Like yeah, people. a lot of teams, a lot of teams. But when they see many more going, that's, that's the yeah. guys you're going to stay with. That's the group you're going to, you brought me to my group. That's the first time, that's the first time that they felt like, oh, fuck. I feel I belong to something because I'm part of the team. Those guys Family. go, they go, and, 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 and it was funny because when I approached them, they go, Oh, Alan, good job, man. You're part of the team now. Oh, I was thinking, You're in the hood now. Listen, <laughs> no, I was thinking, and then listen, I'm part of the fucking team yet. I'm gonna try to win over here. So I can get some free membership over there so I'll be part of this team. I want to be part of this team. I want team. to be part of this team. That's they, a, they yeah. had a few guys over there that was already there that's part of the team that wasn't paying the gym because they were very talented. They was already there like Clovis, like Albertinho. That, that was guys that was training there. It's called Cria do Carson. Kids, the kids that was uh, uh, raised by Carson. Like from babies. Like He right. raised by his saying Cria. He, yeah, yeah. He literally built them. Yeah, you know? from the ground up. Yeah, yeah. Then, That's a big deal. Yeah, then they have those guys already there that didn't pay. I want to be part of those, the group because it would be a group, elite group. Oh, man, you have the privilege not to be Custom Grace Gym, yeah. but you're going to pay with medals, competition. Blood. Blood. You pay with yes, blood. Yes. You're right there. Then, then, then they go, oh, man, fuck, let's do this. Then, then the competition start. That was fucking amazing. That was your first competition. Do you remember? Do you remember your first match? Who, who? Yeah, I remember all the match. Was I remember like today, man? That was what my, happened. In the first match. I was like, the first, first match. The first match. match was kind of the kind of tense. The legend. It, yeah, kind of tense. <laughs> then I double like him. I kind of double like you him. were nervous as shit. Yeah. Like Fuck. every 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 like thought you were gonna play like you're Fuck. going to you're gonna die. Like it's the nervous. That's yeah. The, yeah, but the good and nervous, you yeah. know what I mean? Because I was a kid, I was so hungry. I, I wasn't nervous of being nervous. I was nervous because I want to grab him. I want to win so bad. You know what I mean? I want to <laughs> put my hands on him. My mind going, I didn't put my hands on this guy. He's going to understand. And I, all my mind was thinking, if I put my hands on him, he's going to fuck feel my fury. Yeah. I don't know where I'm coming from. On my mind, I, I always have this go, man, I have this hunger. Confidence. This, yeah. Uh, this, I, this, this, this. This humble, strong confidence, and you had that from the beginning already. So what happens in the first? Yeah, class? yeah, no, because I, I don't know because I have a, a mix between anger and, and, and at the same time the, 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 the nervousness, the the, the adrenaline, the, the feeling to ah, I need to beat these people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I belong to this. 
Yeah, but it's your first, like, you haven't competed yet. So that the, the first competition, like, I, I remember, too, is like, it, it's a computer. Oh, shit, yeah. this is a completely yeah. different yeah, yeah, feeling yeah. than what I was doing in the gym, especially for, for jiu-jitsu. No, but I was already doing it. A bunch of judo competition, judo. I was already doing. Yeah, the I was, uh, comfortable I, I, competing. I won already a bunch of judo competition before going to jiu-jitsu. So the, yeah. ju the jiu-jitsu is like, the most important thing is that you prove Carlson Gracie here. Yeah, no, I just want to get a free, honestly, I just want to get a free membership. I didn't even know who Carlson Gracie was. Yeah. I did the, I was kind of, eh, Carlson Gracie. And just, I know they are the best. I want to be part of this. But I, I didn't know who Carlson Gracie was till then. I haven't seen Carlson Gracie yet. Okay, you don't understand. Okay. I have not seen Carlson Gracie till then on the competition. Then I saw him a couple times. I know who was he. He passed by. He was like God passing by. Ooh. It's got some grace. Oh, you know, nobody touches people. Just look at it. <laughs> you know, people are almost like nervous to even go talk. Yeah, to him. just like, being yeah. around him. You know, yeah, people. Oh, yeah. Oh, got some grace. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. you know. Then, then passing by me, I'm just looking at it too. Oh, I know, I know of him, but he doesn't know nothing. Nothing about, about you. Yet. Oh, I know. That's this kid that came from Manimo Gym that is going to be part of the team. But he was very aware of the team competition. He was very, you know, everybody, everybody. Then I begin to compete. My first match, I win. I took this guy down. I beat the guy. And the second match, too, I will take him down. And the third match was the, 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 to qualify for the final was a little rough. You know what I mean? But I still get the guy in the Kimura. I finished most of the ma my match, only my last match that I beat the guy by point. You know what I mean? But I finished everybody out of four finished matches. Three in a row and yeah. end up in the final yeah. and then went on points. Yeah, went on points in the final. Then, then when I'm kind of disbelieved, but I'm at the same time I'm disbelieved, but at the same time I'm a little mad because I didn't finish the last guy. Wow. You know what I mean? All day I go, man, I kind of finish this guy, man. I could finish this yeah. guy. You, you know what I mean? I was thinking, man, do you, uh, this is going to get me a qualified uh, to go to Custom Gracie Gym, man. Because if I finish everybody, would it be 100% mission delivery? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You still want to But I, I, I left one, the, the most important one, I just beat by point. But when I finish, I, I, I see... I, they raise my head, then I see Carson Gracie right on the on the on the edge of the match. I raise my head, and, and Carson Gracie look up to me. He goes like this. He goes like this. He goes like this, and I walk, I walk toward his direction. Then he looked to me. He put the hands on my head. He goes like this. Where's your name, boy? Where's your name? I go. My name. My name is Alan Alex Ghost. Yeah, you're the Alan Lex Ghost, right? I go, yeah. From that one, your name is only Alan Ghost. <laughs> That's how he said to you. <laughs> I go, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, Alan Ghost, go over there, go celebrate. Good job, good job. Okay, master. Hey, see you in the gym Monday. He said that to you. Yeah, right after. Yeah, yeah, good go. job, good job. See you in the gym Monday. I go, Monday? I want to confirm, yes, yeah, Monday, come to the gym. Perfect. I go, oh, fuck, I can't be yeah, Everything that you wanted, that the whole point of doing all this, it, it worked out. That was right there, man. <laughs> that was right there. So that That's was how, it. That, that, that was, was the beginning. Feeling. That was my entrance in the Castle Grace. And I tell you, I swear to God, I swear in my kid's life, this to you. I promise. I, I put my soul in this. I put my kid's life. When I walked to Carson Gracie Gym for the first time, I, I used to be only uh, do a lot of top game, top game, top game. But a lot of things that I heard about Carson inspire me. You have to, to be a great jiu-jitsu guy. You have to learn how to fight on your back. You have to learn because that's the science of jiu-jitsu. The trick. That's what the, Joe says. The art. Joe says so we're, right the, we're, the one, we're the one martial art that knows how to fight off their back. Off their back. Then I, be, I was thinking about it. When I walk, I swear to my kid's life, man. When I walk to Castle Grace Gym, I begin to do guard for the first time. I feel like, oh, man. This is fucking cool. <laughs> this is amazing. I, I can do this. Yeah. I didn't know when I'm training to these kids. I go, I didn't know I can do that. I think I can do this. 
and it did so good. It's like a, I feel like spiritual yeah. touch by some huge energy that I begin to. I swear, man. You know, the, it was the best the, feeling. The best right on the next day when Casu boy goes to the gym, I start training in his gym, but this didn't last for too long because somebody else crashed my guard really quickly. <laughs> the was over. But I, I, I have this feeling of, oh man, I think I can do this. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? I have this feeling of, oh man, if I elaborate a few things here, if I learn more, if I keep my ears open because I was a very good student. Yeah, so that, that, that's the important thing, though, about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which, like, because of MMA, I think, like, people are so focused on, on being on top these days that they forget how important it is to be good off your back first. You need to, Absolutely. You need to know, like, no matter what, when you get put on your back, you need to know how to take care of Absolutely. yourself there. Absolutely. And if you cannot do that, you're never going to survive in mixed martial arts, period. That, but that's how... I don't know that a lot of people put the time in to learn jiu-jitsu to be able to, in case they end up on their back, know what to do there. Okay, let's understand the, the, the human biology. For 200,000 years, we've been in the bipedals. We walk. If you're on your back, that's me. You're gonna die. Yeah. If you're the, uh, the two hundred thousand years ago, a hundred thousand years ago, and you're back, you were food. You become a food. Yeah. You know that we don't have this instinct even to sleep. The, 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 no. The, you, you could not. You know, lay on your back. No. You know, we gotta find a place to sleep, right? Then we have to understand that we've been doing this for thousands and thousands of years. Now come a bunch of people that with a different knowledge, a different science, and let people know, look, guys, even if you're on your back, you're going to find the ability to survive. To be dangerous. You're going to be, exactly. You're fucking no, dangerous. no, no. Let's, Alan, let's be no, no, no. honest, like, you on your back are fucking dangerous. No, no. If somebody doesn't know what the hell they're doing, and they get between your guard, you can... Put yeah. them to sleep any way you want. No, no, no. I, I don't want to even get to this point yet. Yeah. I'm talking about the point of surviving. Yeah. Because you master, have to defend yourself. Yeah, yeah. You master, self defense. Yes. Yeah. Master Castle used to say, not every time you have to defeat your enemy, you have to resist into your enemy till he surrendered. Yeah. You're going to resist it to him. You gotta right? defend yourself. You gotta defend yourself. If you know how to defend yourself off this defense, a lot of attacks will become weapon. Makes sense. Do you understand? 100%. Now I know how to defend myself really good. Now I'm making myself a weapon. Yes. That's like, hey, it's like this guy only know how to hit people. Yeah. Oh, time to get hit. Oh, I don't know how to get hit or defend the hit. Yeah. You got a problem there. You got a problem there. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So, so so okay so can you start coming up you start training at Carlson Gracie's gym and then and then you're on the competition team obviously right, yeah. right away yeah 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 no but a couple of times I the, I the, so when, when I begin to go on there I tried uh, I, I still go in the, I was in the where's it called uh, not effective yet not yet you know, you, you, you start going there. You start going there because you meeting all these new bodies and stuff. It's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. The process. Yeah. No, when I for, when I first went there on the, 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 the off scene, I walk in there. They go, "Hey, what are you doing here?" <laughs> for the first day, I go, "Hey, Master Carson." He told me to come here. Told me. He goes, "You gotta wait for him." <laughs> Let's sit your ass over there. So you can you know, terrify your ass. Know you are. <laughs> yeah, that's so crazy. That's what I have. I go and sit your ass over there. Man. You gotta wait for him. <laughs> I go, okay, man. Then I went downstairs. I was waiting for him. I'm Copacabana, you know. And when they put soon, Master Castle is walking. Then I go, oh, fuck. I don't give a shit. I'm gonna approach this old man. Hey, Master Castle. He goes, hey, hello. How are you? He's new already, my name. When he said my name, I go, fuck. He knows me, man. You know, hey, hey, hello. What's up? I go, Master. He sent me to come be here to train. He goes, why are you not upstairs already? I go, oh, because <laughs> they told me. They told me to wait for you here. 
<laughs> but the, he goes, no, 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 let's go there. He literally hugged me, embraced me all the way upstairs. He goes, took me all the way upstairs. He goes, hey, this is Alan Goish. He's going to train over here. He's very talented. Ah, there you go. Now I, you're, just so you guys all know, this is my new student. He's official here. Yes. yes. No, 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 that's what he's saying. He that's literally so goes, cool. hey, hey. This is Alan Gorsh, this kid's gonna, he never said, he, Carson doesn't have, have this formality. He explained, just by him, you bringing? Yeah, he just brought me, yeah. literally, he goes, he told to those two guys in the set. One guy was Francisco, the other one is Amaury Bitech's father, that's Amaury Bitech, one of those, that become one of my greatest partners on the, on the gym, his father. And he, when Carson told him, because he was part owner of the gym as well, and told the other guy, go, hey, this kid over here is going to start training with us. He's very good, he's talented, and he's going to be part of the competition team. And they go, good to go. We're just waiting for you to say, go, oh, because he came over here. We don't know him. <laughs> you want a battle? You think he's going to come over here? Yeah, yeah, he's coming over here. You're going to stay. Then uh, that's how we started. That's how like it started for you. My That's degree is right there. And so you come up competing in jiu-jitsu, and was Carlson Gracie kind of had, like, as you're coming up as, as you know, because you started at a, at a very young age, and as you're coming up in jiu-jitsu, competing in jiu-jitsu, you're already, you know, prepared for fighting, kind of. Especially the, the way jiu-jitsu was in those days, it, it was kind of with striking. Because I remember what, the way I came up, too, was like Joe kind of raised us, like, like, in order to get a belt from Joe, you had to be able to do MMA too. Like, you you, you had to be able to. If you, if you, I remember, like, I remember people getting kind of nervous when it was belt changing time because Joe would have the test and he's like, okay, you know, you ready? Like, now the guy's gonna mount you and he's gonna start punching you and he's gonna try to knock you out. You gotta yeah. use your jiu jitsu. Joe, Joe, Joe is one, uh, Joe is my compadre. I, I baptize his son. <laughs> Joe is my compadre. Junior is my, is my godson. Yes. You know, Joe is one of those greatest teacher ever, man. He, he, Joe, man, I'm telling you, teaching is phenomenal. And, and, and he's a great athlete as well. But when I arrived over here in the United States, Joe was kind of chilling. You know what I mean? He didn't want to train much. He was relaxing, right? And how? How? So how old were you when you arrived here? Oh, right here, my twenty-one. Twenty-one, young 21, and fucking yeah. animal. Twenty-one. Yeah. Oh, hungry. Oh shit! Uh, oh, what belt were you at twenty-one? Uh, black belt. Oh. <laughs> Alan Goy is fucking twenty-one years old. Black yeah. belt. Oh yeah, shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I arrived over here, and I'm hungry. I want to fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then, then, uh, so you met, how'd you meet then, Joe? Joe, Joe was the master. Joe used to, to, to be the referee of most of my competition. Most of, uh, the time, a lot of times I competed, Joe used to be the referee. He used to see me, oh, this kid's really good. Oh, man. <laughs> he was kind of older because he's about 10 years old, about eight, 10 years older than me, yeah. you know? But when I arrived over here, Joe, I was on my 21, Joe's, 21, Joe's, right, he's, Study, go to study, and, and, and I go, Joe, man, and he was kind of big, overweight, and go, hey, Joe, that's what's up, man, you got to start training again, man. He goes, hey, man, why, I don't got one of this, this regime, <laughs> this regime of customer is of training, man. Go, no, Joe, you got to start training. I, I, I kind of pushed Joe to do the first body to do. Hey, Joe crazy. wasn't doing Vali Tudo. Joe was just ch chilling here with a bunch of students teaching Irvine behind the airport. I arrive in his gym. I arrive in his gym. He sent me to Pomona. Then Joe goes like this. Hey, dude, uh, guys, guys, go to Pomona because somebody's going to end up picking a fight with you. You can kick his ass. I go, okay, sounds good. <laughs> then I begin to teach you Pomona. Then one day I'm sleeping. I'm, I'm taking a nap in the afternoon. And Joe called me. Hey, guys, guys. I go, what's going on? You gotta go upstairs to Pomona, man. Have some guy over there that challenged people over there. Then, then I went all the way there to Pomona. Joe, I'll go over there, man. There's a guy challenging people. Then, then was me, Pedro Carvalho, in the gym. You know what I mean? I barely speak English. Then three guys walking in the gym. 
You know, remember Pedro Carvalho? When yes. He, he was a tough son of a gun, the black belt, tough guy, you know, he was, was fighting here as well. He was defending Jiu Jitsu. Not many people talk about this guy, maybe yeah. I do, because this guy was really tough, you know, he was around here defending Jiu Jitsu. And, 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 and uh, then Pedro Carvalho was there, he already spoke English, and, and, and we sit in and a bunch of police officers sitting in, 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 the, in the gym. And this guy, we came to challenge. And Pedro Carvalho, okay, who you want to challenge? They have three guys over here to fight. It was me, me, Pedro Carvalho, some other guy, but everybody was already in America kind of jacked. Kind of jacked. I was the only one that kissed skinny motherfucker. <laughs> no, but I was killing people. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you don't need to be jacked. Yeah, yeah. Know. And I wasn't jacked. But most of the people was jacked. Even Pedro Carvalho, because he was here for, couple, for, for, for a year before. You know, he's Jack as well, then, 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 then the guy will go like this, this big guy, go like this, Gonzalez, he goes like this, this big fucking ball, he goes like this. I want to fight with that guy over there, it was me, two purple belt and Pedro Carvalho, he goes, I want to fight that guy over there. Pedro Carvalho go, he said in Portuguese, you fuck, yeah. and he said, I love go over there. He wanted to fight you? So, yeah, and Pedro Carvalho go, I love Mete a porrada. Yeah, you got to Portuguese, I like kick the shit out of him. Fight. Give yeah. him no, give him no mercy. Go, no mercy. He goes, no fucking mercy. So this guy, Joe. So Joe sent you. <laughs> he sent me all the way to Papua. <laughs> I beat the shit out of this guy fast. <laughs> then, then he stood up. I go, hey, hey, let's go the next one. I want that guy over there. I have two more to fight. They go, hey, we don't want to fight wanna anymore. Fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they shit. left. And they left. Joe sent the people. <laughs> Joe, Joe, Joe sent a hitman. Joe, go, go, take your pieces. I achieve the Pomona. You're gonna love living Pomona. When I was living in Pomona, nothing against the Pomona, but when I live in Pomona, I, I grew up on the beach. I go, hey, Joe, where's the beach around here in Pomona? He goes, ask around. They're gonna tell you. <laughs> <laughs> That's just crazy. I go ask her, always the beach? The guy, man, beach is far away. I go, okay, Joe, I'm not teaching Pop one anymore, man. And Joe, and Joe was just comfortable out here teaching. And, and comfortable, yeah. comfortable. <laughs> boy, man, let's go, Joe. We're going to start fighting, man. And, and, you know, I begin. I, I, you, you got Joe in shape to. Yes, to I trained Joe. I train Joe. I make him start working out to train again. When he, Then we have a challenge in the gym. We had some other guy came to fight with him in the gym too. I go, hey Joe, let's go kick his ass. Ooh. We came over there to a gym. They, they have this video. They have this video online. It's online. Yeah. So, so this guy wants to challenge Joe? No. What I think it was uh, the, the, the was the, the right in the beginning when people begin to put events together. They want to see who is who. To, to prove jujitsu. Yeah, to prove jujitsu. So let's see if it's because a lot of people begin to say, I'll do jujitsu. I'll yeah. do jujitsu. But yeah. they didn't know shit. Yeah. That Joe over there went there to kick his ass and he ended up. I, I think it was something like I can't quite remember. I know it was inside the gym. Uh, Joe, just, Joe just kicked Yeah, yeah, I'm telling Joe, Joe kick his ass. Let's go. Let's kick did, uh, I kind of psych him up to, because to, he to, was to, more chilly. He wasn't the time. Uh, he was teaching jujitsu. Yeah, he's teaching, yeah. no need, you know what I mean? Why? Yeah, but at that time, MMA was getting popular. And, and no, 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 man. So jujitsu was no, just. No, not even UFC happening yet, man. So at this time, it's just fucking jujitsu is barely starting yeah, to Yeah, barely, man. It was Horio yeah. over there. Before, yeah, yeah, it was a few months before the first UFC. That's crazy. You know, <laughs> they want to arrive over here a few months before the first UFC. Then, 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 then that's when uh, I began to kind of motivate Joe. And Joe went to, took the momentum and said, okay, well, let's kick the shit out of those and you guys. And you were already fighting in, in, in MMA? No, I was fighting, just competing in Brazil, in, fighting in, in Brazil Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, well, what, at yeah, what age did you start in MMA? Uh, your like first oh, fight. Oh, professional ever. in Japan with Frank Shamrock. I started right yeah. off the bat with Frank it, Shamrock. Was it, it went to it went to a decision. To a draw, yes. To a draw. To a draw. Yeah. We fought to a draw, and, and, and right after the fight, the Japanese to antagonize us, put me in the. In, in, how how old were you? Oh, uh, was about twenty two. <laughs> twenty two, twenty three. Yeah. And your first fight was sh right Frank off Shabra the bat. Yeah, and Frank Shamrock was the champion of the organization. And he has the whole. Crazy. It's like the, the the Gracie family have the control of the UFC. The Shamrocks have the control of the pancreas. 
and, and, and I fought Frank right off the bat. Right off the bat. So oh. you you have to have like already like you know been known. No, I, I got a bunch of fights, and I fought in Brazil. I have plenty of experience. You know what I mean? I have a, 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 a one of my first fights, fights that weren't registered. Yeah, yeah. So you knew, you knew, yeah, yeah. you knew how to fight before you yeah. fought for like. Uh, yes, yeah. plus I trained at the gym a lot. I was training in jiu-jitsu, yeah. and yeah. we believe in the soul of jiu-jitsu, man. Yeah. Jiu-jitsu is the mother of all of us all. You know what I mean? Yes. You know what I mean? Uh, like I tell everybody, you might have di different prophet, but on the end of the day, our mother's the same. Jiu-jitsu. Yes. You know what I mean? And, yes. and, and, and we all defend the same thing, and we believe in the same thing. I do 100%. You know, and, and, and that was the the, 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 the the idea, you know, just to present jiu-jitsu and, and show, show the, 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 that jiu-jitsu is for real. You know what I mean? This jiu-jitsu hits the ego of every single martial artist in, in the world because what happened is one came from Brazil. This fucking guy's from Brazil breaking martial arts. What? No. Gotta be from Japan, from China, yeah. from some place like this. Can I go from Brazilians? Yeah. No. This guy come from the fucking jungle and come over here and choke us out. Yeah, it's it's crazy. You know what I mean? Like that, 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 that's different. What 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 one was a shock of the ego? Ah, oh, this guy's Brazilian. I, I I many times. You know, today Brazilian won the heart of people because Brazilian is one of the most happy and cool outgoing, and loving people. Outgoing, outgoing. Cool, outgoing yeah, just you like know what I mean? You know what I mean? They, they are passionate. Them. Yes. They they enjoy well, life. Yeah. People Brazilian is very honest. You know what I mean? Yes. They, they are what they think, what it is, and they're black and white. You know I've what never what come across a, Braz a Brazilian. Brazilian is a very passionate yeah, yeah. people. You yeah. know. Very cool people. Cool they, people. They, they, they Brazilian won like this. When the people with the martial arts and their heart. Nobody know Brazilian before over here. Nobody know Brazil because of soccer. Nobody know Brazil because of volleyball. Uh, Nobody. Pele. People know Brazil because of jiu-jitsu, man. 100%. Jiu-jitsu. And mixed martial arts that the, the jiu-jitsu brought into it. You know, like I told you, jiu-jitsu used to be... Uh, 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 to, even if one jiu-jitsu was, was small and neat in Brazil, elite, elite, elite. in Brazil, it's still being kind of people not appreciate it. You know what I mean? People yeah. begin to really appreciate it when it came to America, and this become to be, become bigger. I know. I know. For me, I I can relate to that because I I appreciate jiu-jitsu so much because for me, jiu-jitsu really like saved my life. It it. it I was getting in a lot of trouble as a kid. I was doing a lot of wrong things, and uh, and you know I was hitting a really bad path. And all I had was rap music, and I, you know, and rap music brought me to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and you know for me Jiu Jitsu like, and I'm, I'm sure you feel the same way. Um, it's a lot more than just a martial art. It's a lifestyle. It's it's something that you know has changed my life, my mentality. I, it, it made me a man. It uh, it brought me out of some really. You bad wasn't thing. a man before. I was a man, but a good <laughs> I'm man. I'm fucking. Her. <laughs> it made me a man. Oh, but hold on, boy. <laughs> it made me a good man. Yeah, it make you a good human. It make you become a good human. It made me become a really good human. Yes. I was a man before, but I, I, of course, I, I, said I was a good one. Yes. And for me. Uh, long as you were better than you were yesterday, you become good. That's every day. That's my father said. They go, Alan, are you better than yesterday? What did you do better today so you can improve society? I go, I read a book. I go, good. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and that's what I. That's what I wanted to say. Is is you know. Thank you for coming today. I wanted to tell people that Alan Goes is a legend and and fought for jujitsu. And brought jujitsu to a lot of people, and he continues to do that today. And as a matter of fact, he still teaches. Uh, Alan, what's the name of your school again, and where are you located? Right now, right now we have a, uh, a we're located right in Laguna Niguel. It's, it's, it's just that Alan Goy Jiu Jitsu. You see it, the right in Laguna Niguel. But at the same time, we have a. a, a uh, our gear brand 
that called Tuva Gear. Tuva Gear. You know? com? Yeah, Tuva Gear. Yeah, you can go. T U V A Gear. Yeah. Tuva com. Gear. Yeah. Tuva yeah. Gear. Google that. Yeah, you can see over here. <laughs> and and uh, that's uh, that's a. Uh, it's not a. We we sell equipment like geese. Geese. Rush guard, shorts, gloves. Outfit things like, like that. that. His outfit. Like I gotta that. get one of those, you bro. Know what I mean? yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. a lot. Yeah, we have we have joggers. Oh, yeah. You know, it's everything. It's all gear for this sport, for daily sport. People that really enjoy jujitsu, you know, want to have a good gear, good gi, a good uh, jogger. Uh, yeah, you look good, uh, you uh, feel good. Yeah, it's all about it. You know, and, and, and two of us is being embraced by the the, the, the the top athletes right now. If you go to two for. Uh, Tuva gear and the Instagram you see, you know, we have high caliber people that really support us, and we're really happy to have this great journey. You know? Thank you, Alan, for coming by and, and blessing me with some of your, your history. And I, and I know we'll have you on again, bro. Absolutely, bless you. we have to do this again. Thank you, it's bro. Amazing. Appreciate it.